Your company has been growing gangbusters over the last couple of years. Help me wrap my arms around the opportunity to sell cars online. I realize you're focused on used, um, but who's doing it? Who's buying and selling online? And how much bigger could it get and why? Well, so this is an enormous market. Automotive retail in general is about a trillion dollars, so that's just huge. Um, the largest 100 players combined have about a 7% market share. Um, if you look at the average of other retail verticals, the largest player usually has a 30% market share, so there's just so much opportunity here. Um, there's not a lot of other players doing it. Um, it's been going great so far, and as you said, we've been growing very fast. There's a difference between, I would think, as a consumer, there's a difference between buying a used car online or a new car, let alone a new electric car. Um, with a used car, it's like I, I could potentially have interaction with dealerships. I'm probably familiar with a brand. I've ridden in one in some form or fashion if I wanted to over the years. With a new car, not so much. So what do you see when a company like Tesla shifts to online sales only as the challenges for them versus what you do? Yeah, well, I mean, I think every business has its challenges, and I'm sure they'll face them, but uh, they've done a pretty good job uh, on average overall, so I wouldn't be betting against them at all. Uh, I think when you're buying a new car, the, the questions are a little bit different, but that return policy is enormously powerful, just like it is on the used side. Um, so I think a customer that's buying a car, you know, has faith in the brand, knows they can return it, uh, that's a pretty high quality way to solve the problem of getting the customer comfortable with the car. Car buyers have been taking on a lot of debt over the past few years to the point where some are having trouble paying it back right now. So how's that going to play out? And when eventually that slows down, how's that going to affect you? So I, mean, I think the entire auto business is cyclical, right? Sales, uh, finance, we go through credit cycles, everything else. So I think that we're probably heading, uh, or maybe heading into uh, you know, the negative part of that cycle. I, I think that's normal. Um, we would normally expect that. So I don't think there's anything too surprising there. Um, I think the way it will impact us is pretty nominal. Um, as I said, this market's enormous. We've grown at triple digit rates for the last 20 quarters in a row. Generally, anything that you see at the macro level is two, 3%, the things move up or down. And so that kind of disappears underneath our, our growth on average. So I I don't think it's something we're too focused on. Uh, dealers, Morgan mentioned to me, we know how they felt about Tesla coming in with their own retail model, but are they actively fighting you? Or do you engage with them at all? No, I, I think um, you know, we're on the U side, which is a little different uh, than the new side. Um, well, they're still I, part of their market, right? Yeah, I, th I think they see us, but again, this market is so big, right? The largest player has a 2% market share. The largest 100 have 7%. I can't say that enough because I think it just gives a sense of how large this market is. And so I think the competitive dynamics are really different. I think people pay attention. You know, everyone gets nervous when they see a new thing, but I think it's, it's less... Um, uh, it's less cutthroat and you know driving fear than maybe in other markets. So, do you see Tesla as a, you know, a, a, a ship, a tide that? Oh my gosh, I'm butchering the metaphor. Yeah, no, it's a tough is metaphor, Tesla a boon for the industry yeah. overall, or is it potentially a headwind if their grand experiment doesn't work out? Yeah, so I think it's great for us. Um, I think, you know, anytime you build a new business, I think the first goal is you want to deliver something to customers that is better for the customers. I think goal number two is they need to understand that it's better, right? If it's new and you have to change behavior, that takes time. There's a lot of marketing there. Tesla has an incredible megaphone. Um, you know, even though competition isn't that important in this industry because of the size, they're not directly competitive. So I think they're going to be telling the story, and, and I think we're really excited about it, to be honest. I got to imagine your customer is how old? 30. Uh, surprisingly ranging in age. So our average customer is on the order of 40. Uh, but I mean, from, from 16 to 75, I think uh, the presumption that we sell to millennials hasn't really played out. I think uh, young people love, they're, they're comfortable going online and buying a car and saving money. Older people maybe know what they want. Um, and so it's a little easier to go. They've been to a dealership before. They might not be that excited about going back. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I think we have a, a sales pitch to everyone. How many people actually return cars? I mean, I think about e-commerce from, from a package standpoint, um, and it, it's quite a number of people that will order something online and then send it back, and there are a lot of costs associated with that. How does it play out when it comes to vehicles? Yeah, so we're seeing mid to high single digit return rates. About half of those are returns, or excuse me, are swaps. So the customer is swapping out for another car. I think it's interesting to think about that number. If that's what we're doing to replace the test drive, what does it cost us when that happens, right? And it costs a couple hundred bucks and it happens less than 10% of the time. You compare that to $2,000 of SG&A to run a dealership to give customers a test drive. We think it's a really good trade.